Okay, so that's the technical reason for the necessity of the left. And then I think it's attractive because, well, because young people can be resentful, partly because they're at the bottom of the heap, so to speak. They're not because they're young. Like, look, you want to be you want to be poor in 18. You want to be rich in 80. Which are you going to choose? Most well, people are going to take poor at 18. They, well, yeah. <laughs> Especially if you've been rich at 80 and you understand you can get back there. Yeah, well, that's the thing, you know, is that most of the people who are have a million dollars or more in the United States are old. Well, why is that? Well, <laughs> really, do we need an explanation for that? It's like you've had a lot more time to make money. How would that be? That's the explanation. So that's one of the big drivers of inequality is just simply age. But it's not obvious that the old rich people have an advantage over the young starting out people. So, so anyways, but any, anyhow, maybe you're resentful and irritated because you're young and you're still at the bottom of the heap and, you know, you've got other problems too. It's more difficult for people of your race or ethnicity or gender, or at least you think it is. And so you say, well, I want to make things fair. And then that's also driven by some real compassion because nobody really likes that, the consequences of radical inequality. Like, nobody likes the fact that homeless people exist and have to go to the emergency ward, you know, to get treated, and they don't have medical coverage, and they have to live in tents on the street. And so if you have some compassion, then you think, well, we've got to do more for the poor and dispossessed. It's like, okay, that's, that's an understandable sentiment. But the problem is, is that the people, but the problem is, is that it's that, 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 Desire to help is contaminated by resentment and ideological certainty, and then also by something that George Orwell pointed out so nicely in his book Road to Wigan Pier. It's like the typical middle class socialist, this was his diagnosis, and he was a socialist, by the way. His diagnosis was the typical middle class intellectual socialist doesn't like the poor. In fact, they don't want to have anything to do with the poor. They're contemptuous of the poor, but they hate the rich. And I think it's even more devious than that because I think who they hate are the successful some of the successful are rich but really who they hate is the successful it's it's like Cain and Abel it's the retelling of Cain and Abel and so there's some positive motivations for being engaged on the left and there's a lot of negative motivations as well and the people who are really driven by the radical left ideology the real radicals they're almost all driven by by resentment and hatred as far as I'm concerned now the let let's look at both extremes so back to the idea of the of the ideological and verbal territory i said with bill c16 that i wouldn't speak the language of the radical leftists because i don't think that that language should define the game but let's say it does so here's the game the world is a battleground of groups and the they're battling for power that's it that's the game and some of them win and they oppress those who don't win so that's how we're going to view the world okay now the leftists say okay well here's the oppressed people the oppressors, the patriarchy type, patriarchal types, they should be ashamed of themselves and give up some power. And the right-wingers, the radical right-wingers look at that and they say, oh, I see, so the game is ethnic identity, is it? It's, it's identity politics. Okay, we're white males. We're not going to lose. That's the right-wing version of identity politics. It's like, screw you. If we're going to divide into groups, if we're going to divide into tribes, and I'm in my tribe, I'm not going to get all guilty and lose. I'm going to get all cruel and win. And that's like, then you think, well, there's people in the middle. They're kind of looking back and forth. Which side of the identity politics spectrum am I going to fall in? Do I want to go with the, do I want to go, do I want to be driven primarily by compassion? And I'm, am I going to accept guilt for my historical privilege? So that's one possibility. And then I'm the oppressor. I'm the member of the oppressor group. Or am I going to say, oh, no, to hell with that. I'm just going to play to win. Well, then I'm going to go to the right. It's like, well, my sense is, how about we don't play either of those games? 